Hello there, it's Joe the CRM chap here and we're back with a new video uh, in my series all about Microsoft Exam PL400. This is the developer's exam for those who are building solutions on top of or, or are planning to extend out the Power Platform. So in our previous videos we saw how we could start to implement a proper application lifecycle management process for the solutions that we build out within the Power Platform. In today's video, we're going to sort of follow on from that and actually start to see what we've got capability-wise in Microsoft Dataverse and the Power Platform to start modeling out our data. So we're gonna show you how you can create custom tables, how you can create custom fields, and explain some, um, create relationships as well between different tables and sort of explain those concepts in a bit more detail. So first of all, we can see I'm in my uh, Maker portal in my environment. If I click on solutions down here, we can see I've got my solution from the previous videos has got some of the out-of-the-box uh, tables in there. Um, we're not going to customize any of these existing ones. What we're going to do first of all is create a brand new table to represent some data and in this case we want to capture permit uh, data. So I click on uh, create new table at the top up here and we can see I get a little panel on here where I can start to specify my various details for this. So I want to make sure that this is called permit. As we populate it we can see that various um, details automatically added on for us. We can customize details such as, let's say, the display name of the uh, of the table. We can give it a description maybe, enable different types of settings. So for example, support for activities or for feedback, for example. We're not gonna worry too much about this today. And in terms of the settings that we've defined here, this should be enough for our table. So we're just gonna click on create. It's gonna to start to create all of that in the background for us. And we can see straight away it's been provisioned. And down here, we've got a list of various out of the box uh, columns that are created for us by the system. So these contain uh, lots of different potentially useful information types such as okay, who created a specific row, who the owner is, what the status of the record is, uh, lots of stuff which may come in useful. So with this created now we can actually go in and start adding on our own custom columns on top of this. So if I click on add column at the bottom at the top uh, we can see I get another panel that appears on here and what I want to do first of all is actually store something to indicate the start date of our permit. So first of all, I'll just give it a name. Again, we can see that certain details get populated for us and we can also override those. And then we can see down here, we've got a drop down for data types. There's, all, there's a vast um, amount of different data types that we can use for our columns that we create in the Dataverse. So if it's text fields, numbers, um, choices, currencies, lookups to other tables, all of this stuff on here. Um, for the purposes of this particular column, uh, we just wanna store the date only. So we can select that down there. Uh, and in this case, we want to also just make sure that when people create a new row for this table, uh, they always specify a value for the for the column. So we do this by setting the required property to that, like so. And again, there's other properties that we can maybe tinker around with. Again, give it a description, enable auditing. I'm just gonna leave all that as default and click on done. And we can see that the, um, the, the column gets added onto the list down here. It's not yet been created in the table just yet we have to click the save table button down here in order to do that so what we can now do in the meantime is actually just start adding on some additional columns that we're going to need so in this case we want another date field to record our expiration date for our permit just going to accept all those default values like so and we also want to record um, size as well as a whole number field type so if we again click on the appropriate data type everything else we can leave down here um, Sometimes specific data types may have uh, bespoke options. Um, so in the case of a whole number field, we can see down here, we can actually specify minimum and maximum values for a whole number field if we so wanted to. Click on done. Now what we can do is click on save table down here. And that's gonna then sort of commit that into the database. And we can see our new columns will then appear on the refresh list like so. Okay, so now uh, with our permit table created, we want to also create a permit type table. So we're going to click on PL, go back into our solution by clicking onto it at the top. And we just follow the same process again to create our permit type table. Again, we're not too concerned about the various default um, values down here. So we're just going to click on create straight away. Um, now, sometimes if your table does take a while to provision, uh, you can actually get started and start adding columns on. We can see today that it's actually pretty quick. So you don't need to actually sit around and wait for anything at all. So in this case, we just want two columns for this particular um, new table that we've created, uh, require inspections. This will be sort of a, a yes, no field. 
that the user must select. Um, and again, we want to, uh, we're not too concerned about them always giving a value, so we're just going to set that to optional. And then we also want an additional one on top of that, on top of that called require size. Again, that will be a yes no option set field, like so. So let's hit, hit save table down here to get that all saved. Okay, so with our two tables ready to go, um, you know, we, we could, if we wanted to, maybe modify some of the existing details of these particular um, columns that we've created. So, for example, um, you know, if we wanted to maybe update the display name of the created by field, we can certainly go and do that. Um, but in this case, you know, the table is ready to go. We can actually use it to start recording data. What we've not done so far is actually um, defined a relationship between our two table types that have got sort of a similar purpose you know, permit and permit time. So what we now need to do is just make sure that we've created that particular relationship um, and that we've defined it in this sort of correct manner. So in order to do this, what we want to be able to do, first of all, is um, create a link to our existing contact table. And we're gonna link that up to our particular permit um, table that we've created. So if I click on open on the permit, relationships at the top up here we can see that um, some of the out-of-the-box relationships are already added into this solution and what we want to do here is actually just add in a many-to-one relationship and what we want to make sure we've selected is um, the contact entity as our related one table so on the list down here click on contact um, if we expand down here we can see we've got some additional details that we can specify as part of this so for example, we can set the type of behavior, whether it's referential or parental or sort of a custom. Under the custom, what we can actually do is based on if the um, if the, the, if the one in the relationship, based on if it's sort of, for example, deleted, shared, uh, reassigned to other users in the system, we can actually dictate what the behavior is um, for that. So for example, in this mode, we can see, okay, if a contact is reassigned, then all um, related uh, permits will also be reassigned as well to that new owner. Uh, in this case we're just going to leave it as referential, we don't really care too much about that. Click on done, then we click on save table. Then what we can actually see is that the relationship has created a brand new um, column for us on our table. We can see we've got a column here called contact um, and this links up to the table on there. So effectively in the application when people are sort of working with this uh, column type they just specify a particular um, existing or new contact in the system then that will get added on automatically for them. So that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. Um, as you can see we've got some really powerful modeling capabilities built in within Microsoft Dataverse and the Power Platform. Uh, we can create our various different um, types of data that we need to record. We can add on as many different types of attributes uh, or columns in this case to be able to sort of record the information that we care about. And then finally, we can use relationships to sort of bring these tables together, create those logical relationships so that people are always inputting the correct data as they move through the system. So all it leaves me to say is thank you very much for watching. I hope that you found this video useful as part of your revision. Um, uh, stay tuned. There'll be more videos in the series as we look at other topics such as security roles and plugin development and things like that. Um, but for now, take care and have a great day ahead.